Okay, class, today we have a special guest. Mr. Evil, welcome to 360. Dr. Evil, I didn't spend six years in evil medical school to be called Mr. Thank you very much. Right, right, sorry, sorry, Dr. Evil, that's right, exactly. Okay. So welcome. Today we're going to talk about mapping using the two-point cross and the relationship between how much recombination happens between genes is directly por proportional to the distance between these two genes. Or, said differently, the number of recombinants, which is the number of times crossing over happened, over the total progeny, all the offspring, equals the recombination frequency, right? RF, recombination frequency, frequency of crossing over, how often crossing over happens. Recombination frequency is going to be a decimal. So if we want to express it as a percentage, and we do, we must multiply it by 100. 1% 1 recombination equals one map unit. Okay, 1%. So you have to make sure we remember to multiply by 100. You can't just take, right, 0.1 RF and say, okay, that's then 0.1 map unit. No, 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 no. You have to make this a percent. 10% equals 10 map units. That's a lot different than 0.1 map units. And the guy that figured this all out was an undergrad student named Sturdivant. And look at him. Isn't he cool? Cool, blimey. Nerd alert! Yeah, totally. I get it, Dr. Evil. That's exactly right. Okay, so let's move on. So this is just showing you, right, 1.1 map unit, a lot smaller than 32.8 map units. And remember, these are fake units just for the chromosome we're talking about. All right, so we will estimate the relative distances, right? Relative meaning to gene to gene on the same chromosome. Two other genes on a different chromosome with the same map units may be a completely different real distance apart. If genes are far apart, we will see more recombinant offspring because recombination or crossing over is random. If genes are very close, we will see fewer. Okay, blah, 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 this is all the same. All right, we use a test cross, right, just like we did for looking at the chi-square analysis to see if it's linkage or not. In order to do mapping, first of all, it has to be linked. Okay, so a lot of times you're going to have to check out to see if, you know, do the statistics to figure out if it's linked or not. In other cases, you'll be told these are on the same chromosome, figure out the distances, the recombination frequencies. And we'll always use a test cross because that helps us with what we expect to find. Okay, so again, test cross to homozygous recessive, the genes that are located on different chromosomes always show a recombination frequency of 50%. They can't be any more than that, right? Independent assortment in a test cross gives you one to one to one to one. That means 25% to 25% to 25% to 25%. Or making them in our two classes, 50% parental non-recombinant, 50% recombinant. 50% recombination frequency, Right? right there is the highest you can be, okay? Because we can't get more than 50% recombinance. We're always going to have at least 50% parental. Genes that are far apart on the same chromosome will also show that number. And that's what I was talking about in class. We won't know if they're on the same chromosome far apart or on different chromosomes. They'll both look like 50%, okay? The closer two genes are to each other on the same chromosome, the smaller the recombination frequency will be. Approaching zero. Zero would mean no crossing over ever happens between them. So here's an example of why it, well not why it's random, but how randomness allows more crossing over between a greater distance than a closer distance. And if we're just looking at A, B, and C, if we randomly have one crossing over event, right, because these two are far apart from each other, it's more likely it would occur somewhere in here than over here, right? Here, here, 
here, yes, occasionally will happen there. So yeah, you'll get some, but very few. You'll get a lot if the distance is long. So we can use the recombination frequency, how often crossing over happens, to determine relative map distance. Okay, this is just another way to think about it. If you're randomly cutting somewhere all along a chromosome, right, and let's say we cut 10 times, what? Lots more of the cuts are going to be between B and C than between A and B. A and B are going to have a very low recombination frequency. B and C are going to have a high recombination frequency. Okay, so I hope all you guys in 360 are catching this. Who are these people? Okay, yeah, Dr. Evil, I already told you this is for my 360 class, so please, you know, just, just hang in there, okay? Thank you. Now we're going to look at an actual problem. We're taking the F1 here and we're crossing it to a male in Drosophila. So normally we do a test cross, so just hold on. If we look at the F2 and we only look at the males, right, we're only looking at one uh, chromosome. And that will help us, right, essentially just like looking at a test cross. If you still don't know what I'm talking about, we look at the numbers, and again, parental are always the higher numbers. So even if I didn't give you these, and I asked you which ones are parental and which ones are recombinant, you would know. Because the two higher numbers are parental. Right? Larger numbers. The smaller numbers are recombinant. We expect one to one to one to one. We definitely don't see that. Okay, so we know there's linkage. This is very obvious. It's not even close. If you did the chi-square, it would be so linked, would be out of control. Okay, if you want to make sure you understand it so that you're not confused and you don't have to rely on the bigger numbers and the smaller numbers and memorizing that, look at the genotypes here, okay? If we look at the parents, right, of this cross, this is the setup of that gene, right? Y and W wild type. Here's a Y, W wild type. Ooh, it's a parental. Y plus W. Ooh, Y plus W. It's a parental. Y plus W plus. Do we see this in any of the setups? No. So that chromosome did not exist in either of the parent. It must be recombinant. Woohoo! Same with this. Do any of these have plain Y, plain W? Plain Y, plain W? No. So it's definitely recombinant. So you can always go by the numbers and how big or small, and the two big ones are always parental and the two small ones are always recombinant but you can always look at the setup as well to make sure it fits being what we know as parental or unchanged, right? You can think of as in the setup, right? Unchanged, not crossed over, no crossing, right? Those are always what the parentals are. The recombinants require crossing over to exist, okay? Now, I hope you guys get this. What do you think? Uh, Dr. Evil, are you with us? Right. Okay, people, you have to tell me these things, all right? I've been frozen for 30 years, okay? Throw me a freaking bone here. Okay, yeah, but that's exactly what I've been doing. Uh, okay, so I think you're good, right? Uh, uh, you know, we're... Okay, I, I think he's fine. We're going we're gonna to move on. Dr. Evil, just, we're moving on. All right, so how do we calculate recombination frequency, the number of recombinants. Well, where is that? Well, looky here, the number of recombinants. We have to add those two together, okay, over the total offspring. Well, sometimes you're not given this number, so how on earth could we ever find that number? <gasps> yes, my friends, we just add them all together. All of these guys are the offspring. This is just total offspring. It's no magic number. Okay, so just add them all up. If we're not given to you, add it up. All right? And then remember, 
multiply by 100, this gives us the percent. And we come up with 1.3 map units between the Y and W genes. Now, why does this make sense? Hmm? Hmm? Why does it make sense, Dr. Evil? Right. Okay, people, you have to tell me these things, all right? I've been frozen for I'm trying. years. I get okay? it. Whatever. Throw okay. me a freaking bone here. Okay, here's your bone. Give me a break, Dr. Evil. You need to pay attention. It's a very close distance. That means they are highly linked, right? Does that make sense? With these numbers here, they're way off of one to one to one to one. They're not even close, right? They totally suck. These are super high and these are super low. They're way off of that, which means they're highly linked, which equals linked, right? They're not one to one to one, they're linked. They're closely linked. This is a small number they are close together on the same chromosome. Woohoo! We did it. Oh, I love this example. These are great. I'm so glad we get I get to show you this. Good oh, me. Nerd alert. Okay, rude, Dr. Evil. I know I'm a big fat nerd and I revel in my nerdiness. Okay, please pipe down. I'm trying to teach here. All right, this is an example for an autosomal gene, right? The other one was an X-link gene, so we could use the male as our sort of test cross without worrying about the other chromosome. Here's back to the way I described it in class, right? We do the parental, yes, true breeding, the F1, right? Double homozygote. And again, the little slash or the way they're describing it just lets us know this is on one chromosome and this is on the other, and that's how we know it. The test cross, right? to homozygous recessive is supposed to give us what? One to one to one to one, or 25% should be this one, 25%, 25%, 25%, 25 right? So we'll pretend if this was P, P, R, and R, we should have 50% parental and 50% recombinant. If they independently assorted and were not linked, they are linked, and so we can calculate recombination frequency right here and come up with 23 map units okay can we also calculate recombination frequency for the parental well we can calculate it but it's not an effective number right I mean it, that it's not recombination frequency in the parentals because there's no recombination there that will tell you how many parentals there are amongst the offspring and so it is a good way to check your work. If you get 23% here and you don't get a number here that adds up to 100%, then you know you messed up the math and you should just make sure you go back, look at these guys, make sure you got the parental class together and the recombinant class. Because in these examples, I'm always showing them together. But I could have this one down here and this one up here. And you'd still need to pick out the two higher numbers and the two lower numbers, regardless of the order. Or look at exactly how they're set up so that you can actually determine which are recombinant and which are parental. Right? And remember, we ignore this because this guy, where'd that come from? Yeah, from the test croster. So we just look at this. Is this parental? Does this exist? B, C plus? Yes. B plus C, yes. Does little b, little c with no pluses, no wild types occur? No. 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 What about plus plus? No. 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 So these have to be recombinant. They can only occur because of crossing over. Ta-da! That's like the best thing ever. I love it. It's so awesome. Oh, blimey. Nerd alert! Oh, please, Dr. Evil. Can you just... Ugh, rude. How rude. This is just another example from our book showing the test cross, right? Here's to the homozygous recessive, right? Showing you all of the non-recombinant and the recombinant and the non-recombinant and then doing the fertilization, right? Predicted frequency of all of these guys and giving you the recombination frequencies, okay? So, right, that is another way of doing the exact same thing that we did. 
Okay, just our book's way of doing it. You can go with that way, you can go with my way, however you want to do it. Okay, here's an example problem. I want you guys to work through this, and I'd like you, well, you should if you want some points, I would like you to upload this to homework 10, or sorry, iPad assignment in 10 point something or other. That's homework and mapping. Okay, so fill this in. Here's your setup. Okay, your question, example problem. Example problems, just like ones you're going to see on the exam. Okay, just like ones you're going to see in the homeworks. Let's get some points for this. Let's work through this. So screenshot and upload. That'd be awesome. Thank you. And then another problem. What if we blocked crossing over and none happened? So no crossing over. Right? That means 0% recombination frequency. What would you expect to find? Again, screen sh t answer the question, screenshot and upload. It'll be 10 point something homework mapping number two in the Wednesday uh, that just passed. And so this is just our summary and of, of what we've learned about linkage and recombination, right? The rules, if they're on the same chromosome and they're close together, they're linked. They don't do independent assortment, right? Linked genes lead to a larger number of parental class than expected, Right? How does recombination happen? Crossing over. Chiasmata, that's that stupid chiasma, the visible signs that everybody loves and all the stupid standardized tests. Right? The farther away, the more likely this is going to happen. This can reflect a physical distance, a relative physical distance. Right? And the frequencies between 0% and 50%. You can never have a recombination frequency or a bigger map unit than 50% for the recombinants. And that's about it for today. Dr. Evil, do you have any parting words? I'm almost afraid to ask, but before we go... Look what you did to Mr. Bigglesworth! Okay, I didn't do anything to Mr. Bigglesworth. I'm just trying to teach you how to map genes. So, please, I hope you enjoyed it. And class, I'm sorry for all the interruptions. Take care.